what's up what's up what's up hey you guys um so my hair is a little long today please forgive me i gotta get a haircut but the barber shops are off limits to me right now so i gotta go home and shave my head but uh and i forgot my my hat so uh forgive the madness up there okay um i have to do a presentation for you guys today but i'm gonna turn my screen around so uh hold on one second while i turn this around thank you so much thank you so much thank you for so much for being patient all right so if this thing ever loads all right, so it says staying sharp, keeping our mental health right. I wanted to do this because the other day was World Mental Health Day uh, on the 10th of October, okay? And I didn't do any lesson for you guys on that. And I realized that uh, keeping our mental health right, especially right now during this time of COVID is so, so important. Um, if we're not healthy and happy, uh, things can go wrong for us real quick, okay? And so we're gonna talk a little bit about what happens uh, in our body to keep us happy and uh, what we can do, some real quick tips to make sure that we stay happy, okay? So stay with me. Uh, this shouldn't take too long. I hope it's not that long of a presentation, okay? So. Right now, I think it's really important because of COVID-19 that we remind ourselves uh, of all of the challenges that happen to our mental health for us, the challenges that come about and keep us from being happy on a daily basis, right? So first is our physical health of ourselves, our family, our friends. You know, we're all really worried about what's going on out there and, and who's getting sick and who's not getting sick. and uh if we do get sick how do we get better and are we going to be able to get better and so that weighs heavy on a lot of us um on a lot of our minds right uh especially for grandparents and uh uncles and aunts and that that sort of thing right you know i hope that none of you guys get sick um but i know it is a big worry in a lot of your lives okay so the physical health is is one of the big ones to uh of our challenges to to our mental health and our happiness right now okay uh social isolation from our circle of friends that means that you know right now during this time we're we're in quarantine or we're supposed to be locked down at our house and you know staying home as much as possible so we don't get to hang out with our friends that we normally would you know if if your friends are normally here in school we don't get to do that or if you normally go and hang out with friends like at baseball or football practice and that kind of stuff or hang out with your primos and primas or your cousins right that's the kind of stuff we don't get to do right now because of covid so it's a big challenge for us um we don't have the lack of re we have a big lack of recreational activities we can't go fishing camping skating all that stuff right we can't go to the movies that's something that's huge for uh teenagers and, and stuff like that right to be able to go hang out with our friends and have something to do go get ice cream or go to mcdonald's and do all that stuff right so um the lack of recreational activities and then our proximity proximity means just how close we are to our family in the house right you know we all love our families a lot right but sometimes when you're there with them all day every day and you don't have a big huge giant mansion to wander around uh sometimes just being too close to them can get on your nerves and irritate you and bug you right so it's not always the healthiest of situations to be locked up at how in the house during covid right uh tension about work or finances being passed on yeah most of you guys don't have jobs or have to worry about paying the rent but i know our parents do right and I know because they're worried about work or, or how they're going to pay the rent, uh, it kind of gets passed on to you. And, you know, if they get mad or upset about something, they're going to take it out on you sometimes. Uh, and unfortunately, that's the way it happens. Uh, and then you take it out on your little brother, or your little sister, right? So um, 
you know, just be aware of that, that even though you're not working, you still might be feeling that, that tension, okay? And then mental health challenges, you know, there are a lot of us uh, out here with real uh, anxiety or depression or bipolar disorder. A lot of people have it and haven't been diagnosed with it, and it is a real challenge to, to life in general and to your happiness and your mental well-being, okay? So uh, I just put all those because COVID right now really makes these worse for us. Uh, and so we got to remember this is because of COVID is the reason why we got to stay mentally uh, sharp and healthy and okay, keep our, our happiness going. So I wanted to put some myths about happiness up here. Uh, you know, a lot of people believe that money is going to solve all their problems and then make them happy. The myth about that is some of the most wealthiest, richest people in the world are some of the most unhappiest. Uh, there are people that commit suicide on a daily basis that have millions of dollars in a bank somewhere. They don't have to worry about money, but it's not its not the money that's there that's bringing them uh, happiness, right? Money also brings problems. And so uh, money's not gonna solve that happiness thing. You gotta be happy for you before the money comes in. And, you know, having $5 might not hurt, right? Or having an extra 20 might be good so you can go buy some flaming hot Cheetos or whatever, right? But in life in general, money's not gonna solve your problems and it's not gonna bring you the happiness that you're looking for, okay? Uh, there's a lot of people that think that happiness comes when they have a relationship and they meet the love of their life and they get married and, you know, Prince Charming takes them and, uh, you know, you move into the castle and now you're happy forever after, right? That's false. You know, happiness is within you and if you can't find happiness on your own, you're not going to find it with somebody else or they're not going to bring it to you. So uh, we need to make sure that your happiness is is straight you and and you're the only one that's getting it okay um there's also a myth that says adults aren't happy only children can be happy because children are the ones without the bills and without all the responsibilities and so yeah children can be happy yeah but adults can be happy as well um there is something that says the, even adults get even happier as they get older so you know, as you know, life goes on and you you don't have as many bills no more. Maybe you pay off your house or uh, you've already raised your kids and stuff like that. Maybe you get a little bit happier later on. OK, some people are just naturally happy and there's nothing you can do to change it. And then some people, vice versa, would be naturally unhappy. and There's nothing you can do to change it. Right. Well, there are a lot of things to be able to do to change your happiness or your sense of being happy right and that is what we'll talk about okay so i put this here happiness is 90 percent perception and 10 percent reality i always talk to all of my kids about this because uh perception means how we view the world or how we take things in uh, how we perceive them um it's our view of life, right? And our happiness is 90% about how we view life and how we see things rather than how they really are. And I'll give you a prime example. Um, there are people sitting in prison today that have been uh, sentenced to die in prison. Basically, they get life sentences, okay? And they may have done something terrible or may not have. That's not, you know, up to me right now to decide. A judge probably already decided that for them. What I will tell you is that some of those people decide that even though they're going to be in prison, right, they're still going to have a sense of happiness. So some of them will work to earn a college degree. Some of them will work to, uh, to better themselves as people. And they find their happiness every day. Uh, even though they're waking up within the same wall, they're waking up apart from their family, they're waking up uh, in their own little world that is something that they wouldn't have wanted to for themselves to be in, right? That's their reality. Their reality is they're locked in a wall. Uh, their reality is they're never going to see the outside world again. Uh, 
that's their 10% reality. But their 90% perception is, I can get up, <coughs> excuse me, I can get up today and be happy and make myself a better person. So if they can do that being in prison, then we can do that out here, okay? Uh, here's another big one for your happiness. You got to take control of what you can and more importantly, let go of what you can't. As people, a lot of times we want to be able to try to change the whole world, right? And think that that's going to uh, make life easier for us and think that that's going to create our happiness. It really doesn't. You know, there's a certain point where you got to Say, you know what, this stuff right here, I can actually do something about. I can actually change. I can actually control. And I'll work on that, right? But this stuff over here, I have no control over that. So I just got to let it go and go do its thing, and it's not going to affect me. Or it may affect me as a person, but not my emotional stability or my emotional happiness, right? So, for example, as a teenager growing up in a family, right? Right now, none of us can control what's going on with COVID, right? Or when we're coming back to school. We can't do anything about that, right? But what you can do is making sure that you're doing your your assignments that your teacher's giving you, you're doing everything that you need to be doing to, to get good grades in school. So when we do come back to school, uh, you guys are caught up and it won't feel like you're so lost or anything, okay? So take control of what you can, do what you can, and then let go of what you can't, okay? Uh, that's a good model to live by. Ooh, so I'm gonna talk to you guys a little bit about the science behind how we become happy and why we are happy to begin with. Our body and brain controls everything and our brain is the center of our whole body, okay? It sends out signals to our body to do, you know, lift your right arm or lift your left arm uh you know jump in place your brain does all that but our brain also produces a bunch of chemicals okay and a bunch of these chemicals are also what's uh responsible for our happiness so i'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about that okay so our brain produces chemicals to make us happy and there's a chemical called dopamine which produces a good feeling when we do reward seeking behavior so say uh I, you know, I'm trying to earn some, some money to go out and maybe buy a new pair of shoes, right? So I asked my parents if I could um, cut the grass or do something like that, right? Uh, our body actually produces dopamine after we accomplish that. And we, so if you want it and if it produces a good sense of, a good feeling when, when it produces that dopamine, right? So if you want to increase the amount of dopamine in your brain and in your system in your body right then you do that by setting goals and achieving them so you tell yourself you know what by the end of the day i'm going to make sure that my room is clean and then you achieve it and so your body actually produces a little more of that chemical that's going to make you feel good about life oxytocin okay that produces happiness through connection and bonding okay so this is uh, the chemical your body produces when you feel bonded to somebody, you feel close to somebody, you feel like you're loved and they love you, okay? I mean, they love you and you love somebody else, okay? So if you want to increase the oxytocin levels, hug somebody you love. Or if you ain't got nobody around to hug, cuddle with your dog, right? Your cat, anything, right? Somebody or something that you have a, a real connection with, right? Make sure that you get that oxytocin level up, okay? Endorphins are the chemicals that decrease pain in our body. So every day, you know, our body goes through things that might cause it pain. You know, you accidentally slam your hand against a table or, uh, you know, you stub your toe when you get up in the middle of the night, okay? Um, endorphins are the things that our bodies release to actually... Uh, mask that and make sure that our body don't feel as much pain okay so to increase the dorf endorphins in your body okay you have to do it through very uh physical exercise so go for a run you know do jumping jacks do anything that would put your body through a workout and that'll increase the endorphins in your body okay GABA, okay and i'm gonna say a GABA because i don't think it's called GABA i think it is GABA uh it's the molecule that produces a sense of calmness in your body, 
right? Like everything is slowing down and I can control this and I'm feeling good about that. So you can increase GABA by doing meditation or yoga. So all those people that you see out there doing yoga, like at Sunset Cliffs and stuff like that, that's what they're doing. They're out there trying to increase their GABA, okay? Uh, you can do it if by just doing meditation. And meditation sounds like something strange or weird, uh, but sometimes just closing your eyes and thinking, sitting there very calm, concentrating on your breathing, just breathing in, holding it, and breathing out very slowly and deeply, okay, that's meditating. Um, serotonin. Serotonin helps to increase your self-confidence levels and your sense of worthiness and your sense of belonging. So serotonin is a really important thing, okay? If you want to increase your serotonin levels, you got to challenge yourself and do things that give you a sense of accomplishment. So, for example, you know, uh, challenge yourself to, to learn, you know, to read faster on your on your reading test or challenge yourself to uh, build a model uh, or challenge yourself to build something out of some Legos, right? That's going to increase your serotonin levels and make you feel better. Uh, adrenaline. Adrenaline creates a surge in energy. It makes you feel very alive. You can increase it by doing scary things or being uh, or breathing very rapidly or contracting your muscles. So like say you're going to go on a roller coaster, that's going to increase your adrenaline, okay? Or you're going to, let me see, what else could you do scary that would be safe? Um, maybe if you're afraid of the dark, going into a dark room might increase your adrenaline, okay? Uh, or if you breathe very rapidly, like, <laughs> that's going to increase your adrenaline too, okay? Uh, it's going to make you feel very energetic, okay? Um, I put this here because we have to train our brain, okay? Our brain is something that is naturally focused and trained to watch out for strange things, okay? Uh, it's supposed to look out for what's wrong, what's different, and that's a survival mechanism. Our brain does that to be able to protect our body. So you walk into a brand new room, our brain is looking for what might fall off the wall and hurt you, or our brain is looking for uh, who might be in that room that might hurt you, okay? Uh, it's, a, it's a way our, our body deals with being able to survive and being able to be healthy. But we can train our brain to not only look at what's strange and what's wrong, but also look at things that are positive in, in, the light, in our life, okay? So training our brain to be happy doesn't mean ignoring reality. I don't, I'm not going to say uh, if you're going into a new situation, you should ignore the threats in a, in a new situation or the things that might hurt you, right? But you also got to be able to train your brain to look at the things that might be able to reward you in a new situation as well, okay? Look for positive things in a situation and stop focusing on the negative. In life, we tend to focus on the negative so much. Uh, and those people that are really happy are the people that focus on the positive things in life, okay? For example, you know, uh, we all have to come to school uh, and do what we got to do at school. And that could be a negative thing. Every time you wake up in the morning, you could say, oh, my gosh, I hate going to school. I wish I didn't have to go to school, right? And, yeah, you'd be very negative and you wouldn't feel very good about going to school on a daily basis. But if you were to look at it as a positive thing and say, hey, you know what? Let me just get this school thing out of the way with this morning. And then I'm going to have the rest of my day for myself and I can do what I want to do or do what I need to do. Um, that's being a little more positive about things, okay? Uh, express gratitude for things in life. So gratitude just means that you're grateful for things, okay? You're happy to have things. And all of us uh, have situations in life where we think, you know, we're in the worst situation in the world at times. But to be honest with you, there's always somebody out there that's got uh, a story that's, that's worse than yours, right? You know, you could say, man, it, it's messed up. I don't get to have brand new shoes uh, when I want, right? Or, you know, I my parents can't afford to buy me the, you know, the hoverboard that I want, right? 
But there's somebody out there without feet. There's somebody out there without the legs to be able to ride a hoverboard. So uh, we got to be grateful for the things we do have. And that will bring you happiness or help to bring you happiness. Okay, so train your brain to recognize what's good and you'll feel happier. I put this here. Okay, it's a glass of water uh, as a little example of if we're thinking positively or we're thinking negatively okay so let's say we all just went out to pe uh we all just ran uh and you got real hot and sweaty out there okay you come in and you ask for a glass of water and i bring you back this glass of water now somebody that's really negative is gonna say why did you only bring me back a half a glass of water right i asked you for a glass of water and you only brought me a half a glass, that's messed up, right? Somebody that's being positive would say, thank you for the half, thank you for the glass of water, right? This will really help make me, help quench my thirst or help, you know, help me uh, cool down, okay? So it's either about having to look at things positively or negatively, okay? Um, so we're gonna go into some tips on how to make things feel happier for you guys. I put great relationships equal happiness. So the people in general that have really great relationships in their lives tend to be a lot happier in their lives, okay? So we're gonna talk about a little bit about how to make those relationships great relationships. You're gonna take the time to nurture the meaningful relationships in life. And why I say meaningful is because we all know people that, you know, we know through Instagram, Facebook, people that are we would call associates. They're not very meaningful relationships in our lives. So don't waste a lot of your time uh, on those relationships. If you're only talking through, to somebody through Instagram uh, and that's the only reason why you talk to them, then don't waste a lot of your time, right? But meaningful relationships like family, your actual friends that you get to hang out with, uh, those are the relationships that you should spend a little, little more of your time in building and making sure that uh, they know that you're there for them, okay? The happier the person, the more likely they are to have a large supportive circle of family and friends. And I got this from a science review journal that said, uh, happy people have more, more family and friends, okay? So if you're working to make sure that you build this big, large circle of friends, friends, Okay, it's going to work for you later on to make sure that you're a lot happier. Um, building great relationships lead to happiness, which leads to more relationships. So happy people find great friends and great friends find happy people. So if you're building these relationships with people, uh, you're going to become a lot happier. And then your happiness is going to lead you to look for more people that are also happy and allow you to build more relationships, okay? I put to be a great friend, oh, be a great friend to have great friends. So a lot of times there's a lot of people that wonder how do I get more friends or how do I make friends, right? But to get those great friends, you have to be a great friend. So start by staying connected. Um, you know, a lot of times in life we t we get p petty and we won't hit up somebody unless they hit us up first, right? Or I'm not gonna text them unless they text me first. I'm not gonna say hi unless they say hi to me first. Okay? We gotta look all past that. We gotta stop being petty and we gotta be real with the people that we actually care about. So stay connected with them, make the effort to, even if it's your mom or dad and you haven't had a chance to stay connected to them and, and be uh be part of their life make sure you do that okay have quality time with the people that are really important to you so that means you know spend time with them and it's time that you're away from your phone it's time that you're away from your xbox it's time you're away from your social life and you're just spending quality time with somebody you know you could sit there and have deep meaningful conversations or you could sit there and and you know, cuddle with your mom and you'd feel a lot better. She'd feel a lot better. Okay. I put give compliments, give compliments to people on how they make you feel. Tell them 
that you love them, tell them that they're great people in your life, tell them that you appreciate everything they do for you, okay? You appreciate the fact that they're there for you. You appreciate the fact that um, they do what they do, okay? And then I put, don't hate, congratulate. We spend way too much time as people hating on other people that are doing good uh, when we should be taking our time to raise people up that are doing good and making sure that they know um, that they are doing um, doing right, okay? So spend your time instead of leaving hateful comments on people's Instagrams or, uh, or talking bad about people on TikTok, um, talk good about people on TikTok, okay? I put live in the moment but plan for tomorrow. As young people, uh, old people like me are always trying to push you into making sure that you're doing what you need to do so you can go to college or so you can have a good future, right? But you got to remember that you still got to live as a young person. And yeah, we live and, and enjoy life today, and but we plan for tomorrow, okay? We make sure that there is a plan and a backup plan uh, for, you know, our future, but we still got to enjoy what we're going through today. So Enjoy life while you are young. Don't be in such a rush to grow up. When I was uh, a young man, uh, all I could, could do was, you know, wish that I was 21 so I could drive and have my own car and then uh, move out on my own and stuff like that, right? But now that I got my own car, a uh, master's degree, uh, a house, uh, I got a, a project car that I'm working on, um, I have money in my pocket, have money in my bank account. I would give all that up to be 10 years old again, okay? Um, don't rush to grow up. There's not Life ain't all that much better as a grown-up. You, you got adults that wishing that we were kids again so we didn't have the responsibilities and didn't have to pay bills. And, you know, it ain't all that great, believe me, okay? Don't be afraid to be a kid still. You know, I, I know even as... At your age, you know, going out and throwing a water balloon with your friends is, is something that's still really cool to do, right? Uh, having a water gun fight, uh, drawing or coloring on in with with crayons, you know, that's still something that you guys should take the opportunity to do. There's nothing that says that you guys can't enjoy your youth and be a kid still. Okay, I put stop to smell the roses. Uh, we get so busy in life every day that we forget that life is life and life can be great. Uh, life can be, can, you know, make us, help us to be happy if we can stop and actually appreciate it. So, you know, you stop and smell the roses means like if you're walking to the store one day and you happen to pass a rose bush, you got to stop and appreciate the beauty of that rose bush and, and smell how, how great and, and, it, and beautiful it smells, okay? I put relay happy memories. You guys all got fo uh, phones, I mean, cameras on your phones, right? And the thing is, you guys got to take pictures of those good, great, happy memories. And so you can relive them and replay them for when you don't feel so good. Go back through, scroll through all your, your photos on your phone, right? And pull up those memories with your best friends. Pull up those memories with your family doing special things. And... That'll help make you feel better, right? Use that phone and that camera for uh, what it's intended for, not just to brag about how, how great your, your day is, right? But go back and, and look up the good memories and make sure that you feel good about uh, uh, what you've been through. Live life with meaning, okay? Science has proven that those that help others and give back to their communities tend to be help, happier and healthier, okay? So volunteer, I know you guys are kind of young still, but you guys can still volunteer at your churches, at the park, you know, even at a library to help read to kids that are younger than you. You guys can volunteer to help your little brothers and sisters do their homework, okay? Uh, and that'll give you a sense of, of worthiness and a sense of good feeling about yourself because you're helping other people. Practice kindness or do what I call racks, okay? Random, random acts of kindness. So be kind to other people and do it just out of out of the ordinary, okay? Just do
Do it because you're doing it, not because somebody's asking you to do it, not because you're going to get anything from it. Help somebody put their groceries into their car, you know, help somebody carry their groceries from their car into their house. Um, you know, donate a pair of shoes. Do do something random uh, that's going to make somebody else feel good. And I guarantee you will feel a lot better about yourself, too. OK. This last one here is kind of important. I put find what you're passionate about and get somebody to pay pay you for it. Too often in life, uh, when we're growing up as teenagers, we want to focus on, oh, I need to make money when I become an adult, right? And you want to make these giant sums of money so that way you could become rich, right? I will tell you, real happiness comes from doing something that you're passionate about. Uh, for me, I am passionate about helping young people uh, do the job that I do right now, right? Uh, I'm a school counselor because that's what I always wanted to do. And fortunately, you know, some people here at Darnell are willing to pay me for it. So I come to work every day being happy to come to work. And I hardly miss a day because I love my job. And so it, for me, it's not a job. It's a career. And because it's a career, it's something I'm happy to do. I don't have to look at the clock and say, when do I get to go home? Right. I get to look at the clock and say, when do I get to go to work? Uh, and so you guys got to find what you're passionate about and make sure that you get somebody to pay you for it later on. Okay. Here's the important part. You got to take care of you. Okay. You can't be anything for anyone until you're something for you. That's one of my favorite uh, quotes of my own for a long time, because uh, a lot of us want to grow up and help our parents, make sure we buy a house for them, help our little brothers and sisters. Uh, but you can't do any of that until you help yourself, right? Until you, until you're ready and stable and happy in life, then you can go back and help the other people that need your help. Okay. But you got to do something for you first. Take care of your physical and mental well-being. For, for me, I put for you guys, you guys got to exercise and sleep. Okay. Um, that's one of the biggest keys to, being good during especially during this time right now you guys don't get to exercise very much because you guys don't have your pe classes and stuff like that but there's nothing to say you can't do jumping jacks in your room or you can't run in place or you can't do push-ups that kind of stuff right and then get enough sleep at night get off your phone okay put your phone down go to sleep so that way when you got to get up and for school in the morning you're not tired you're not sleepy you don't get on your teacher's nerves okay make sure you get in enough sleep and I put get rid of the toxicity, okay? There are things in life that drain us of our energy, drain us of our happiness, drain us of uh, the great mental well-being that we could have, right? They could be people, they could be events, right? So if there are relationships in your life that are toxic and draining, get rid of them. And then by toxic, I mean, they're just like poisonous. It's like every time you even think about them, uh, you feel bad, okay? So if you have friends that are toxic and draining, cut them out of your life. You don't need them, right? It's harder to do that with family, but as you get older, you'll be able to, okay? Um, get rid of the toxicity. Get rid of the things that are poisonous to your soul, to your body, to your health, okay? So that's all I got for you guys today. I want you guys to make sure that you're staying sharp, okay? You're taking care of your own mental well-being, um you're staying healthy and happy and um i will talk to you guys later okay uh hopefully next week with a hat all right bye